eight pellets, two shells, and two smoking barrels. The double-barreled shotgun was one of the first weapons you immediately unlocked alongside the M1911 when you first joined Red, and for a beginner's weapon it suits the player very well, along with a little secret. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the DB shotgun. The first pro and con is the high damage output at the cost of only having two shells in the chamber requiring often reloads. The high damage of the DB shotgun is enough to kill almost all types of zombies with a single well-aimed shot except for an exposed ride zombie which takes two hits with all eight pellets, but still can be easily finished with the M1911 if any health persists. This, however, leads on to the next con, only holding 8 shells, which requires often reloads of ammo boxes. This, however, is traded off with an advanced movement trick known as DB jumping. To DB jump, simply look in any direction opposite of where you want to go, jump, and fire simultaneously. You'll be propelled upward, which then you can use mid-air control to reach your destination. You can mainly use this to go to high places to avoid zombies. However, be aware of any jetpack zombies that can be there to ruin your day. You can go any direction with a DB jump, but mainly you should go for a tall object or building. You can propel yourself forward and backwards, but you'll mainly not gain any distance without the double shot attachment. Let's talk about that real quick. The double shot attachment essentially provides both higher damage at once and farther DB jump at the cost of having ammo to 1 to 4 and at risk for fall damage if used improperly. The double shot, however, is recommended for players with a slightly bigger arsenal of weapons. It's best to pair it with a weapon that can pierce right zombie shields like the Step of Magnum or Desert Eagle. The double shot attachment can also be used to avoid high amounts of fall damage. Lethal falls can be reduced to just 10 points of damage with the right timing. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, thank you all for watching. Next video will cover Dread 1.34 and my opinions on it. A few announcements before I go to sleep. 1. I've decided to make the weapon guide orders by when they are unlocked and available for purchase. The reason for this is because I wanted to put more time into these guides. Already in this guide I had to make visuals, get footage, and type out what I'm going to say, like I'm doing right now. This also means that the next guide will be on the M1911, but after that I can finally talk about the auto weapons and such. 2. I've been looking for music to match these guides I've been doing, but to no avail. The best I got was this track called Dream Catcher by Kevin McCoy. Which, to be honest, matched nicely, but I like variety, so please tell me a good music channels that features copyright free gaming music that's not no copyright sounds. 3. Probably should have included this in 1, but too lazy to revoice. If you have any ideas on how to extend the video time on future guides, let me know. I might try to give maybe backstory behind the weapon and how it appeared in Dreadlore or real life, so tell me if you want either of those. That's really all I can think of, so yeah. Next video will be on Dread 1.34, next guide will be on the M1911. Thank you all for watching, and please have a safe day.